Good evening, everyone. This is the Board of Trustees regular meeting. It is October 25th, 2016. It is meeting number 2016-20. It is 7.31 p.m. Um, please take the roll. President Barry? Here. Trustee Desmond will not be here tonight. Trustee Carberry? Here. Trustee Vorder? Here. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Here. Trustee Yelenichik? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Would everyone rise, please, for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comments this evening? No? No. Okay, no public comments. Item four is conflict of interest disclosure. Are there any conflicts to disclose with any item on tonight's agenda? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor, I will not be uh, voting on the, uh, your nomination of my wife, Mary Ellen, to continue her service on the Fair Housing Commission. Yes, her name is Mary Ellen, not Mary Ann, as uh, the blog that claims to be Oak Lawn's most accurate news source stated. Mary Ellen is the second longest serving Oak Lawn Commissioner. She was rec originally recommended for the Fair Housing Commission in 1991 by Trustee Marge Joy and again by Trustee Carol Quinlan. She was appointed by Ernie Kolb, Dave Heilman, and Mary Burry. She has served the Fair Housing uh, as the Fair Housing Commission's one and only chairperson for the last 25 years he has done the work necessary to assure that the people of any race, religion, or national origin have the same rights to own or rent housing in the village and thereby has helped secure millions of dollars in capital development board, community block grant funds uh, to the uh, village of Oak Lawn. It would be my honor to confirm the mayor's appointment of my wife, but I hereby recuse myself to assure my full compliance with the ethics ordinance. Thank you, Bud. Mm -hmm. Any other conflicts to disclose with any item on tonight's agenda? Okay. <clears throat> item five is Chuck E. Cheese presentation. I'd like to welcome uh, our, our team from Chuck E. Cheese up. Um, would you like to come to the podium, sir? Sure. We're happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And we're just going to start by asking that you introduce yourself, and then we always ask if you live in Oak Lawn. And okay, no problem at all. Thank you. Um, number one, thanks for allowing us to be here tonight. And um, I'm Roger Cardinelli. I'm the president of Entertainment. I've been with the organization for almost 30, it'll be 30 years this November, actually. In addition, I brought Rudy Rodriguez, who is our general counsel. Angie Brewer, who is our district manager here in Chicago. And we also have outside counsel, uh, Mark Karasik from Baker and McKenzie, that's also um, from Chicago. With that, I'd like to start by saying that CEC is committed to being a good partner to you and the community. And we believe our most recent efforts to ensure the safety of our guests who visit our restaurant have been effective. Safety is one of our four core values pride ourselves on being a safe place for family fun. We will continue to make the necessary strides to ensure that Oak Lawn Restaurant remains a place where a kid can be a kid. Um, Chuck E. Cheese has actually operated in Oak Lawn for 33 years. I know it originally started as a showbiz pizza. When I came to the work for the company, we operated two different brands. We were both showbiz and Chuck E. We converted all our locations in the early 90s to Chuck E. Cheese's. Uh, we've actually had 100,000 people, guests, come through the Oak Lawn location last year, um, serving many families in this community. Um, I told the story, I think, when I was here a couple, probably a month ago, that I remember when I first started in the company, I was an accountant, and so my job was to pay all our rents. And I would always look at what store sales were. And when I actually came to work, um, this Oak Lawn location was the number one sales store in the concept. Um, and it's been a great store for us for many years. After I met with a few of you in September, as promised, we hired a very experienced security consultant to conduct a thorough review and analysis 
of the security measures, policies, and procedures we had in place at our Oak Lawn restaurant as of September 22nd. The expert we hired, Donald Green, is president of Strategic Security Concepts and is a former United States Marine who spent 28 years with the FBI and the last 15 as an independent consultant in the area of security ma management. He also has written a widely regarded book titled Shopping Center Security. Mr. Green visited the location on Thursday, September 22nd and Friday, September 23rd to perform a full security assessment and provide recommendations to further improve our security measures, which he outlined for us in a detailed report and we promptly shared with the village. In addition, Mr. Green will be supplementing this report after he makes another visit to the location this coming Saturday, October 29th. He was unavailable, obviously, for a weekend, and that's why we rescheduled for that time. Immediately after reviewing Mr. Green's recommendations, we put together an action plan to implement several safety and security improvements. Specifically, we coordinated with the Oakland Police Department to hire and deploy an additional off-duty police officer as on-site security. There are now three officers at the store on Saturdays and Sundays. We developed and um, and dressed our game room attendants in brightly colored yellow vests, identifying them as game officials to quickly attend to any broken games or issues that may be happening on the game floor. As Mr. Green noted, people can sometimes get upset when a game isn't working and they can't find someone to help them. It is also addressing the flashpoint by making the game attendants easy to find. We improved and enhanced the exterior lighting on the top corners of the building. Specifically, we added bright lights to a couple areas outside the building. I drove there tonight and I can tell you it's very bright in the parking lot. We also increased the brightness of lighting inside our store as well. This is the second time we've done it and increased it dramatically in the store. We enlarged the font on our good behavior signs that are displayed in several places throughout the store. These signs remind our guests of our code of conduct which addresses the behaviors that are not allowed inside our restaurants. We also added language emphasizing that Chuck E. Cheese will have zero tolerance for violations of these rules. Any aggressive behavior, physical threats, hostility toward both guests or employees will not be tolerated. We added a code of conduct messaging to napkin dispensers, which are found on every table. We believe the presence of these cards will help to emphasize our rules of conduct as well. We repositioned a number of popular games on the game floor. Mr. Green noted that there were several games placed side by side that it would attract crowds of people to watch players or to wait for turns to play. We separated these games in highly trafficked areas and spaced them around the game room floor to help reduce crowding and improve the movement and flow of patrons in our gaming. The type of games I'm talking about is we used to link up basketball games together and it, it actually is a lot of fun playing and competing, but what happens is you get a big group there and it just tends to cause issues. So that's why we split those games up. We know that um, that is one, that security is one thing, but as critical as those indoor improvements are, we also know that being a trusted community partner is just as important. Our in-house marketing team has been working closely with our national PR agency, current PR, which is actually based here in Chicago, and our creative agency, Zimmerman, to find ways to demonstrate our commitment to Oak Lawn through o local outreach and community building. Specifically, we joined the Chamber of Commerce in September and are actually taking them to lunch, or taking them lunch tomorrow. <coughs> we arranged for Chucky Mascot to visit the Advocate Children's Hospital to hand out Good Patients Awards, stickers, and tickets to the children. Prior to Chucky going to the hospital, we set up a station inside the restaurant where guests could make get, get well cards for the hospital patients. And we delivered those cards again on October 11th. We hosted an all day fundraiser at the Oak Lawn restaurant in which 15% of all proceeds went to purchasing iPads for the children undergoing treatment at the hospital. Through this effort, we were able to raise $2,000 and we donated that amount to the hospital. And actually, I talked to the gentleman that headed that up and asked him, um, having just recently myself gone through cancer, and, um, 
And he just said, when Chucky went in there, it just lit the kids' faces up. And the hospitals actually asked us to come back whenever we can, um, just to brighten their day, bring them stickers. The iPads, we were able to get four. They have four new rooms there where they actually treat the patients because they don't like treating them in their rooms. They're kind of safe haven. And they said they were able to buy an iPad for each one of those so the kids have something to do while they're in there. Um, we placed ads in the D Daily Southtown newspaper with coupon offers. In addition to this, we're planning the second fundraiser and canned food drive in November and a toy drive in December. We have a handout that shows all the security enhancements and community outreach initiatives for you that we'd be happy to hand out to the trustee. All told, we've spent over $50,000 in executing on our recommendation in Mr. Green's report and in our effort to improve our engagement in Oak Lawn. This investment is money well spent to improve the security at our restaurant for our guests and our employees and repair and restore our rep reputation. We continue looking for opportunities to make a positive long-term impact on the Oak Lawn community, and our efforts will continue beyond just months. I can look back on being with the company for many years and tell you that we were very good on a national basis um, supporting. We, we are a huge advocate of big brothers and big sisters. We've donated millions of dollars to school systems through fundraising, but we were actually terrible at executing in a local community. I appreciate the um, trustees' input on getting more involved, and I think our store is actually feels a lot better um, about it, and I'm, I was excited to hear the impact that Chucky had at the hospital. We know Oak Lawn has a world-class police department that is extremely well run. We're very appreciative of the off-duty Oak Lawn police officers that provide security at our store. And as I mentioned earlier, we have increased their presence um, based on Mr. Green's recommendation. We're confident that these Oak Lawn police per personnel can help us keep the peace and eliminate incidents at the store. To that point, we, we are actually been down for years in any incidents, and as you're aware, um, the incident that took place back in August, um, which I came in September to address, involved an altercation that started with individuals who had a problem with each other before they ever came to the restaurant. Unfortunately, there is no way to screen for interpersonal conflicts. It's just as impossible to guarantee that guests won't get into disputes with current or former family members or with other parents who they think have said or done something to upset their child. We've all heard about issues at youth sporting events and um, in much the same way it starts in our restaurants. People are naturally very protective of their children. I know I was. I have two boys myself and when they were young you didn't want anyone bumping into your child or saying anything to your child. Um, and that those sometimes become magnified um, when families gather together for parties. What I can guarantee is this. Safety of our guests and our employees is a top priority at our company. If people don't feel safe coming to Chuck E. Cheese, we won't be in business. Um, we're taking this issue and your concerns absolutely seriously. We're going to continue to do everything we can to ensure a safe, wholesome environment at every single Chuck E. Cheese. And with that, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Trustee Border. Yeah, Mayor, thank you. First off, I, I have no doubt that Chuck E. Cheese is addressing or trying to address the issues there. Uh, for more than 20 years, my personal experience has been problems at Chuck E. Cheese. And uh, I think there's been a failure on this board, okay, to address these issues until I got elected. And I sat down with your people okay, and made some of the suggestions that I'm hearing today, and um, uh, they did a good job with that, but the problems persist. The fact that you're here, uh, Mr. Kent, uh, was it Cardinelli? Cardinelli, Yeah, yes. the CEO of a major corporation. How many stores do you have? 577, I believe? Um, yeah, that's on, on the um, CEO side. We also own a concept called Peter Piper, and we have an addition about 150. So we have a major, major corporation in America, and uh, obviously you coming here for two incidents, coming down here to Oakland, fly down here to address our concerns, is impressive. Yet, um, the problems persisted in the past three years, and I've read your recommendation. I'm happy finally you're becoming part of our community. It didn't happen until we started um, addressing our concerns there. 
and that's all good. I, I, when you're dealing with kids and you're at that hospital, uh, that's a positive thing. Now, your suggestions here isn't much more than what we've already tried to do there. I have some reservations of whether we're going to accomplish the goal we want uh, for the community, for the safety of your customers there. Uh, I'd like to ask you, if we implement these plans, and we have another incident there, a major incident. What's your company's going to do about it? What's their policy? How are we going to move forward if we have another incident after this? I'd like to promise you that or guarantee you that there will never be another one. But that, as we know, it's the world we live in today. I tell you, I have 65 million guests come through my doors every year. And I have incidents like this in maybe five or ten of them. Um, and so, obviously, I hate to say it, but it's the it's actions of parents that cause this. Anytime you're dealing with families, um, it gets emotional. And most of every issue that we have in our stores are really tied to family problems that exist not related to Chuck E. Cheese, but just this is part of the world. Um, we're implementing these, and I, I'd also like to tell you, I don't think we're done. Hopefully we get even more suggestions coming out of his visit on Saturday because, as you know, Saturdays are when we have bigger crowds in the facility. So, again, we're not stopping today. We're going to continue to improve. Um, we have emphasized even further training. I've got walkie-talkies now that our, our cast members carry around the store, so if there's any incident, they can do it. I'm increasing the, the um, police presence, and without – discriminating obviously that that and it was great to hear the village Oakland doesn't discriminate as well um, we just you know it, it's just an issue of America today but but we're doing everything in our possible power to, to address them well my concern is the safety of the children adults I understand adults are adults and we have other establishments in Oakland that uh, require police presence we have Donnie Brooks fights and family but they're adult establishments. Uh, yours is a child. Your your business model is children. I don't want to see somebody, some child, get hurt in your business. So I, I tell you what, I'm very. Uh, after 35 years of police experience, I don't think you're going to be able to solve your problems over there to my satisfaction. Okay. Uh, I want to know what you'll do, uh, what your corporation policy will be if we have you back here again. Uh, to de address this. He will respond to the city in any way, shape, or form necessary. Um, you know, I, again, I go back to that as, a re as more of a reflection. Fortunately, we've never had an incident where a, a fight spilled over to a child. She kids get hit at, hurt at Chuck E. Cheese just like they do at a park. They fall off a game. They fall off a ride and things. <coughs> never had an, a serious incident. And, and it's really all been tied to the parents. And I, I think that's just a reflection. But again, We've also heard from a lot of people here because obviously there's been a lot of press about Chucky possibly leaving. And I've got a lot of comments. I'd be happy to read them to people that have written in saying, no, we love Chucky. It's a great place. It's a safe place for our family to actually go. And I'd hate to take that away from them. Well, I, I remain skeptical, uh, Roger. Um, is there any other comments? Yeah, how many uh, police officers do you have during the week? Um, we have to, we're, we have two on Thursdays and Fridays, and we have three now on Saturdays and Sundays. And do you have any any other night? No. However, it, it, during peak times like a vacation time or whenever they, we get any type of crowds, um, we would increase that based on, on capacity. I was at the facility just a couple hours ago, and there's eight guests in the store. So obviously um, you're not going to have an incident with eight guests. Um, I'll tell you this, too, after walking the store. I'm even going to, and I, I told Angie this, they don't like hearing me say this, but I said, Angie, I'm even going to get five or six more games out of the store. We've significantly reduced our seat count in that store. It's down under 400, even though the occupancy is higher. Again, doing everything to manage crowd control. Mayor, may I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Uh, your name is Roger? Cardinelli, yeah. Cardinelli. Roger, you've been uh, working for Chuck E. Cheese for 30 years. Yes, sir. And you've said that you started out in finance with them, and you've looked at the store comparison. So obviously, the village of Oak Lawn has a value uh, to Chuck E. Cheese. You've made uh, a lot of uh, changes. I know that uh, the first change you voluntarily removed your liquor license, that was how many years ago? That was three years ago. That was three years ago. Um, 
and you yourself said that today you personally walked the store and you're making a recommendation to remove some more. Yes, sir. Um, how many times have you been to this store in the last five years? Mm, three times. Three times? Correct. And how long have you stayed at those three times at the store? Um, it depends on the visit or, or the type of visit. Sometimes up to three or four hours. Sometimes I'd be there an hour and a half. Okay. I try to get to when I'm in a market, every store in the market. Um, since I've gotten on my new role, I'm not out as much, but I used to travel and see literally half our stores every year, um, well, I, as well as our international stores. I'm just concerned. You said that out of all the stores, you have other stores that have issues like this? Um, again, I mean, anytime you have 500 plus, there's been a couple issues throughout there that the press seems to, because it's a kid place, um, blow those things up and things like that. But again, I've seen those same incidents happen at the schoolyard down the road and at YMCA games that I attended for my son and, and, and friends of his as well. So you feel that the press is blowing the severity of what's going on there up? No, no. What I meant by that is because it's kids and it's volatile, it does make the press, yes. Okay. And at this particular store, I'm glad to see that after 30 years of being involved in the village of Oak Lawn, I believe that Christ Hospital has been there and Advocate has been there for pretty much all of the 30 years and all the things that you put in your presentation have all existed in Oak Lawn. Why suddenly is there this great interest to get involved in the community, become a member of the Chamber of Commerce? get involved with the Children's Hospital? As if I go back through the years, um, as a company, an organization, we tended to, to basically tell our management team at our individual stores, your job is to run the four walls here. And we ran it out of Dallas as a national brand. Um, we recently went through a huge change organizationally at the company, and we've actually started local store marketing um, in our stores and allowed people to get out on it. So shame on us as an organization that we held back the people that were running our stores. And so this is a change that's been actually brewing over the last year and a half or so. Okay. And, and you said that you're formerly, you were an accountant, now you're the CEO of the company. How long have you been? Actually the president. Or president, president, president of the company. How long have you been the president for this? I've been the president for two years and six months. So in that two years and six months, I know you look at a lot of different numbers, but the security and the safety of your individual restaurants out of the hundreds that you have, you, there isn't any type of ranking or numbering of that? Um, we do have armed um, personnel, of some some that are not armed personnel that support it. So we have security where we feel it's necessary. If we've ever had incidents, we put them in. So when did this become first knowledge of yours that there is such a huge issue that's not blown out by the press? that has actually been a part of that particular restaurant for many years and well-known. Can you rephrase that one more time? Sorry. When did you find out about the issues that have been going on at this, this Oak Lawn restaurant? Um, I found out about three or four years ago. Some so, more major incidents, yes. Okay, so three or four years ago. So it, it has been common knowledge to you that this has been a problem. Yes. In fact, we in three or four years ago, we did come up and we did address a lot of things. That's when we the liquor license. That's when we took chairs out of the stores. That's when we did the first round of lighting. That's when we pulled the sky tubes and the other zone out of the store to address those things. But just as recently as today, you went in there and you want to make more suggestions to do more. Yeah. Well, the, the point I'm making, and I'm not going to spend any more time on this, this has been a known issue to your company, to you, and to the people in the village of Oak Lawn. I, I don't know where you live, but I'm going to tell you that when you talk about safety and bringing your family to it, mm -hmm. uh, overwhelmingly, and, and I'm on the very north side of the village of Oak Lawn and furthest away from this restaurant, but I'm going to tell you that uh, not too many of my constituents, if any, would be going to that restaurant because of the concern of safety. Yeah, you know, um, I, I had both my boys work at a Chuck E. Cheese, their first jobs to actually earn a, a paycheck other than mowing lawns or throwing papers. And I would feel comfortable with my children working at that location. So that's, that's just Roger. Well, I will tell you that being a lifelong resident in the village of Oakland, I would not feel comfortable with having my teenage children work at that restaurant. Okay. And I'm extremely concerned about the lack of a sense of urgency by your company at making sure that these changes, which you know, I'm glad that you came in today, but you know, I read through the whole 
presentation that you put there. And it, to me, it's just a another give us another chance to continue doing the things that we said we were going to do for years. And I do believe that enough is enough. Um, that's fair. I can tell you we've significantly reduced. We've had two at that store this year. I define as incidents, the one that obviously we're all aware of, and then there was a verbal altercation, just people getting in an argument um, this year. Um, and we've significantly reduced them from prior years. So I, I you know, do believe that we have taken strides and made improvement. So when did you implement all the changes in the PIC? All of these are in place. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma now, my concern is even despite all of these, there was another incident this weekend, and it didn't culminate in a police report, but uh, there was another altercation, and it was quieted down, and that's what we want to see. But, but none of these things stop that. It, it, it kind of suppressed it from getting more explosive but and that's what that's what we're working towards and eliminating all of them. I, I mean um, we continue to do everything in our power and believe that it's there out there and like I said I would like to have mr. Green have the opportunity to come back on Saturday and see if there's anything more we can do so if if all of these things are implemented and all of your suggestions and your expert suggestions after his next site visit are implemented and all of those things are implemented and the problem continues where do we go then you know i, I would like and hope that that doesn't happen um, but what if it we does? will continue to pursue and watch the people in our stores i mean i if you want me to guarantee something or promise something that i that would be impossible it would be impossible for me to provide that i guess Again, I just believe it's it's a good i would hate to see that the actions of a few people um, stop the 100,000 people that come through those doors and all the other kids that find a safe place at Chucky to have a good time, especially in the time. But what do we do if, if none of these things are stopping the problem? I just, while you're here, like, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I don't know other than I'm telling you I'm doing everything that we possibly can to get that done for you. Trustee Warren. There, just, just a comment on uh, Trustee Olenichek's, when did we start this? We started this when I got elected mm -hmm. because nothing happened there for 20 years. People on this board, okay, just let it slide. And I do agree, you have addressed my concerns the best you can. I, I, would, I, I would suggest, Mayor, that we have a process in place, okay, to make uh, disciplinary action, take action, and have a committee review the incidents that happen here. Um, I, I, personally, I'd like to make that motion right now and send this to that committee. I think you made a great presentation, okay? I'm, uh, I understand due process. I understand that if we take action, it's serious action. We want to pull your license in a worst-case scenario. Like I said, you, the fact that you're here, the CEO of this company, impresses me. And I believe there's a commitment here to make it better. But I want you to know that I only live three blocks from there. And you know what? You make some good points about a safe environment for hundreds of kids. I take my three-year-old daughter, granddaughter there because of two reasons. One, I am the trustee there, and I want a feeling of what you're doing there. And I've been there four or five times, and I've never seen any problem. But they do blow up quickly, and there is the potential. Um, so, Trustee Vorder, are you making a motion? To no, I, I don't know. I, w I want to hear more feedback. I'm not going to make this motion now. Well, if you won't make the motion, I'll make the motion. Okay, let's, let's um, let everyone weigh in who wants to first. <coughs> you, you, okay, you're making a motion. I, to I would like to make a motion to proceed to... Proceed to disciplinary proceedings up to and including a revocation of Chuck E. Cheese's business. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Yep. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Strait. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, yes, Mayor. I, I just like Bob. to add, first of all, <clears throat> you know, Roger, um, while you make a, a very a presentation that sounds very nice, um, all of your community initiatives. Do not are not going to do anything to make the uh, the establishment that you uh, 
that you have any safer for uh, the kids and the residents and the first responders that that uh, uh, you know have to deal with these issues and the neighborhood uh, that surrounds your 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 establishment. Uh, we had over uh, 40 uh, 911 calls in 2014, uh, or excuse me, in 2015. We've had over 55 this year, and uh, you know many of these reports, of course, involve fights, batteries, and physical altercations at an establishment that caters to children. And I think it is time, as Trustee Olenichek has said, to uh, hold public <coughs> hearings, determine if Chuck E. Cheese poses a danger to the health, safety, and welfare of our community. Okay, Trustee Vorder. Yeah, I would just like to qualify Trustee Streit's use of 50 some calls there. Statistics can lie in liars use statistics, but the vast majority of those calls, okay, are minor incidents. They're alarms, okay, uh, just minor parking incidents. I, I look at every one of them. I, I review every one. There's been two or three, okay, in the past year that brings concerns and generated major reports. So to say that 57 calls endangered this community is not correct. Now, I'm not opposed to sending this, okay, for review to our disciplinary committee, and I will be voting yes, but I, I do believe this corporation is attempting, okay, attempting to correct our concerns. And before I get hard-handed, I would like to have more review of this and believe me, I can get hard-handed on this. So, Mayor, so Mayor what Barry? I, actually, what I'd like to do is uh, well, to, talk to, to our attorney um, well, to explain what that process is. I just, I just want to say, Trustee Vorder, you've done a great job of bringing the facts, of working with the, the business, and making sure that we were fully informed on everything we're going up to and including having the meetings that you've had. But since this has become a, a major upfront issue and it, it is going over into the whole village of Oak Lawn, I am going to tell you that overwhelmingly my constituents have told me that they've had enough. So I appreciate your willingness to work with the corporation, uh, but this isn't something that just flared up. This has been going on for a period of time. Thank you. Um, Paul? Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to know, you know, if there's been overwhelming, uh, you know, responses, I'd like to know. Well, who's getting that? I haven't gotten, uh, I don't know if the village, Larry, if you've been fielding calls, a great deal of calls. I have not. Have you? Ha Mayor, have you? Um, people I talk to personally. hundred? I've gotten zero. Yeah. yeah. Zero. It's, but, um, it's a concern with residents. I'd like to support Terry on this. I think, uh, you know, Terry's got, there's action being taken here. Uh, Terry wants to wait and see with some uh, and review the situation. I uh, I support Trustee Vorderer's um, plan. Um, he's skeptical, but he's also um, you know paying respects to a company that seems to be making some efforts to uh, to, to to rectify a, an ongoing problem. So um, right. I'll follow uh, the trustee's lead. So, Bud, I agree. Um, it seems to me that uh, Chuck E. Cheese is uh, doing what they feel is necessary, but I think we need some more independent review, uh, forming a committee to uh, watch what they're doing and gauge their response is probably the right address, the right direction to go, and I'd like to do that. Okay, so we have a motion to institute disciplinary proceedings, which allows for fine suspension or revocation. There's a whole spectrum of of options. Paul, can you talk about this process? Kevin Casey's here from our office. He's been dealing with uh, Trustee Vorderer and the, the representatives from uh, <coughs> I'll let him Thank you. just speak to where we're at and where we're going. Thank you. Oh, sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, in the event that the motion carries relative to a uh, motion to proceed with disciplinary proceedings, your next step in this process is to appoint an independent hearing officer. Um, notice will be sent out, discovery will be had, and a full-blown hearing before an independent individual uh, will be had at that point in time. Okay, so this is not a, anyone 
in the village of Oaklawn. It's, it's it, it would not it would not be anyone from my office. Um, it would be an independent hearing officer. Okay, thank you, uh, Trustee Vorder. Uh, Mr. Casey, we yes. can we can institute this any time in the future, correct? Absolutely. I mean, we're going through due process. We're giving this company every opportunity to address our concerns. Personally, I told you I don't think it's going to happen, but I want I feel it's fair, mm -hmm. okay, to give this company a fair shot at it. But I'm prepared to make that motion. The next incident. And there, okay. there's nothing prohibiting that. Okay. Correct. Okay. Mayor, may my recommendation. Uh, establish a group of people who would oversee the the way that Chuck E. Cheese is handling the uh, process that they're going through. I don't see any need to make it uh, uh, as rigid as you just explained, but I think we need more input as to what Chuck E. Cheese is doing and get somebody from each district to look at this and make sure that they're doing what they say they're going to do. The proof is going to be in the numbers that you deliver. And we want to make sure that we're getting the right numbers. We don't want inflated numbers. We don't want deflated numbers. We want the truth. We want to see your actions. And we want somebody to independently report to us how you've made progress. And that's what I would like to see. Okay. So are you modifying the motion that was made? Okay, we have... Okay, we have... Trustee Ellen, yes. second by Trustee Bob Stride. So we're for the Yes, we're discussing down, this. I know. So, but you can't make another... Okay. Till, because the motion's on the table. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other discussion about this particular motion? Okay. We're gonna. Want to make a superseding motion? But I think. So. The motion on the table is. Start so. Thank you, Dr. Heron. The motion on the table is to institute disciplinary proceedings, uh, which follows the the path that uh, Mr. Casey has outlined. The motion. And the mayor, Madam Mayor, I will just to reiterate, I will not be supporting that motion. Okay. Could I ask Mr. Casey one more question? Sure. Mr. Casey, this, this, if we institute this, we're going to be spending a lot of taxpayer money when we may be able to solve this problem without spending all this tax money. I'm assuming we're going to be paying lawyers, okay? We may be premature in spending this money. You, there will certainly be costs that will be incurred by the village not only for lawyers, but the discovery process and setting up the hearing and the procedures. Yes, you are correct. It, it may be well spent money eventually, but right now I think I would have to say let's let's try to work this within our board and our community before we start throwing thousands of taxpayers' dollars at trying to solve it. We can solve it maybe right here. Correct, correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Maybe we bring it up back in maybe we bring this up in uh, April. Yeah. Okay. Or, or when there's another incident, okay. should that occur? Okay. But we didn't have so, so the question was, uh, we have to deal with this motion right now, mm -hmm. and then if people want to make a motion after the vote, um, they can make another motion. So I'm going to call the vote on the motion at hand to institute disciplinary proceedings. Um, let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry. No. Trustee Vorder. No. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? No. Trustee Elenichik? Yes. Motion fails three to two. Okay. So do you want to form a committee, a panel? What would you like to do, gentlemen? You know, I, I would be more than happy, okay, to uh, form a, a group, and maybe some, some citizen from each district, okay, uh, we can meet. Periodically, I can have conversations with the CEO, and we can monitor this thing for a few months, okay, and see if, if his suggestions do something. I do like the lighting. I'd like to see a little more lighting on the east side of the property. That may not be your responsibility. Maybe the uh, Kemco, the people that own the shopping center, but that area is pretty dark. Our store? Our store. Well, that's just to, just to the east of your store between the steakhouse and your store, that parking lot is pretty dark. I lived the heck out of that side. Did up, you? Up until you get to Longhorn's parking lot. I was okay. just there this evening. It was okay, I haven't I, seen I, that. I, I, go, I probably put them in within the last seven to ten days. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I could throw a football out there. Okay. Well, I would entertain a recommendation from each trustee, from uh, a citizen in the district, 
okay, to form a panel. I'll meet with them. We'll discuss criteria on how to evaluate this, okay, for any future action we take so without spending taxpayers' dollars in forming a formal uh, committee. I think, um, so Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that might be a, a good idea. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure, but I'd like to hear what, you know, your ex-police, you know, our chief, our police department, their security people, you know, what recommendations they have as to how we can communicate or, um, you know, um, I realize it's a political issue as well, but uh, I think we should get down to, I think the people, the, the people in the police business and the security business and the managing stores, I think they have the expertise in this um, consultant, is it? Is, or is yes. this a, yes. a consultant? Um, maybe has he been engaged with our police department, I take it as well, right? I would assume, yes. Yeah. So, so we'll definitely be seeing him on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, so I think I think their consultant communicating with our chief and our police department would be a okay. good start and maybe something on a regular basis would be set up to keep that communication going. Measure, put uh, some some goals together and some um, the next yeah. site visit for the security expert is October 29th. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, when would we have a deliverable report on that visit? I would assume within five days afterward. By the end of let's that. Say, week. Let's say a week. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Can we put that back on the agenda, Mayor, uh, for our next meeting uh, for additional discussion? Um, if we get it, it probably wouldn't make the agenda for the first meeting in November, but the second meeting in November. Okay. That is, the, you don't have to fly in from Texas. I appreciate your commitment to helping us solve this problem and your company's effort. But maybe you could have a representative here to make that presentation on the additional uh, changes you're going to make there. Fair enough. Okay. I appreciate so, it. So, uh, Trustee Vorder, just to confirm, you are not making a motion uh, to to form that committee, or you are making that motion. Do I do I need to make a motion to no. form the committee? No, he does not. No, we no, could. No, I could just put together a committee and report sure. back to this board with okay. the results. So, what you're requesting is a representative from your district for your committee? I would I would suggest that maybe the chief of police can join me. Uh, we do have police officers in there on the weekends. They could provide some vital input. I would think. Right, fire chief's in charge of occupancy. He can give me a report. We can evaluate this on an ongoing situation, okay, for the next six, eight months before we make a decision to send this, okay, to a uh, to a disciplinary hearing. Okay, so um, that's fine. And and will general residents be invited to attend these meetings uh, and give input as well? Just a thought, just because I know. A lot of residents have a concern, and I think, frankly, if the Cubs weren't playing tonight, we'd have a lot more of the. But the Cubs are a big deal, you know. Hey, so. Madam Mayor, and if, I, and if I could, if I can get from the trustees anybody who sent an email out, you know, uh, everyone communicating via email, if they could forward them to me, I'd like to hear the the concerns of the residents. I haven't seen any of them yet, but if you have any, I'd I'd love to see them. Thank you. Okay. Do you guys have some emails, I'm guessing? Mike, you'll be getting a lot of emails, trust me. Good. I'd like, I'd love to see them. And, and so. I, I would like to receive them, too, with the name and address of the residents that have concerns. Okay. okay. So does anyone have any more questions for Roger? Any questions for his team? Any other discussion? We, we have a great resource here right now if you have questions. Okay, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity and appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're on item six. Approval of meeting minutes for the regular meeting minutes 2016-18, dated October 11th, 2016. May I have a motion on item six, please? Motion to approve. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Stalker. Second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any discussion? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry. 
Yes. Trustee Border? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Elenichik? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item 7 is new business by Village Trustees. Let's start uh, in District 2. Trustee Olenichik. All right, I'll make this quick, Jane. I know you always yeah, coach me well on it. Uh, we do have Halloween that's coming up, and I want to commend our police department with an initiative that uh, <coughs> Chief Murray and his uh, police officers have taken. Uh, prior to uh, Halloween, he is going to, he and his department are going to have um, all of the uh, registered sex offenders visited and uh, notified of what they need to do uh, and verify that they understand that uh, there are no trick-or-treaters coming to their, to their doors based off of what their requirements are. Um, Trick-or-treating hours are from 3 to 8. And as uh, uh, police chief, well, chief, you, you, you want to talk about the uh, discussion that we had about curfew and uh, what the residents can do to help us on the trick-or-treating? By law, 10.30, weekdays, 11.30 on the weekends. Um, but Chief, I'm going to just ask if you can come to the podium. I'm sorry, because I know people at home will want to hear this, and I don't know if the audio will pick up on the video. I'm sorry. All that advancement technology, I still have to walk over here. <laughs> um, as, as Alex and I had talked earlier about... Uh, curfew and you know and I get that asked quite a bit from parents you know what's curfew um, I give them the, the the law answer which is 1030 on the weekdays 1130 on the weekends anybody under the age of 18 has to be inside or have a legitimate reason for being out on the street um, but the real answer is mom and dad it's whenever you tell them to come home so that's your uh, that's your answer but uh, as far as the, the curfew in Oak Lawn, it's 10.30 in the weekdays, 11.30 on the weekends. Thank you. And then the other, the other good advice of uh, we, we all have children and we all know that Halloween is a very active time. And if we have high schoolers, we need to be very aware that there could be Burma shaver eggs that would come out. And you would hope that you are watching your kids to make who's who's giggling back there, that you would hope that your kids wouldn't be involved in something like that. But the best uh, uh the best thing a parent can do is to be proactive with their kids, explaining to them prior what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, and also supporting our police force in the difficult job that they have to do. I will tell you that the uh, the police will have a full uh, a full accompaniment of police officers out in the street that week or that night. And uh, you know, I know that in the previous years, not that anything bad has happened, but. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we continue to keep Oakland a great place and make sure we make it through this Halloween by uh, making sure that our children behave while they're out there and are respectful to the neighbors and other, other kids that are out there. Um, I do commend the police department for doing the check on the sex offenders. I think that that's a great program. And, uh, Chief, you believe that that will be accomplished probably by Saturday prior to Halloween? Uh, I'm, I've talked with the uh, division chief who's in charge of and um, I believe it's scheduled for late this week. Okay. Well, thank you for the good job on that. Um, but let's have a nice Halloween. Remember, trick-or-treating is from 3 to 8. If you do not want to participate, do not have your lights on and do not give candy. If you'd like to participate, you have your lights on and let people know. Normally, we have a person that comes up here and talks about participating in, in what you can have. A, there's a sign that you can actually say participating or not participating. And I forget which website that's from, but if we could find that out from the previous year. Halloween.com. Uh, Is it Halloween.com? If we can get that out for the residents prior to Halloween, that'd be great. Halloweencandy.com. Yeah, maybe it's Halloween candy. Bill Berry. All right, thank you. Yeah, and then. Uh, first time in years I haven't seen Phil at the meeting. Yeah, well, hey, it's Phil because the Cubs home. are playing. We miss you, Phil. Um, then uh, if you're looking for something very good to do uh, instead of watching the Cubs win the World Series, uh, the Oakland High School Theater Program will be uh, putting on a uh, play this weekend, which is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, called Spamalot. I know that the cast and crew have been working very, very hard, and it's going to be a great presentation. If anybody's been to any of the theater programs over at Oakland High School, they do a phenomenal job, and 
I know that this is a very, uh, very good play coming up. You can either purchase ticket, tickets at the door or by calling 708-424-5200, extension 5920. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. District 3, Bob. Nothing new this evening, Mayor. Thank you. District 4, Trustee. Thank you, Madam President. Just to follow up, uh, a report on my community meeting, which I held last Thursday. The meeting was well attended with over 75 <coughs> residents. And I want to thank the residents that came out. Okay, uh, there was an interesting presentation by our uh, Steve Radis. Okay, he presented uh, the business climate here in Oak Lawn and its future. And our chief of police, Chief Murray and Detective Cronin, gave a very informative uh, presentation on security and crime in our community, which is down, okay, uh, despite what you might hear. And I want to do a special thanks to uh, Joe Boyle. Joe was there from the reporter newspaper. He did an excellent job uh, on the front page of the paper reporting on my meeting. Uh, a lot of uh, information there that the chief gave, okay, which is shared with the community. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, reporter, thanks a lot, Chief. Thanks a lot, Detective Cronin and Steve Radis. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. District 5. Nothing at this time. Thank you. District 6. No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, Village Manager's Report, Larry. No additional items, Mayor. Thank you. Village Clerk's Report. All right. Approval of Sunday Monthly Disbursements, number 2016-20D, dated October 25th, 2016, in the amount of $1,000,000. Five hundred ten thousand two hundred dollars and eighty three cents. Thank you. May have a motion. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any discussion? Take the vote, please. Trustee Carberry. <laughs> yes. Trustee Vorder. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Strite. Yes. Trustee Stalker. Yes. Trustee Lenichek. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got early voting going on at the Village of Oak Lawn. It began yesterday, October twenty fourth and runs every day through November 7th. And um, the people from the county are doing a wonderful job here. We've got 18 machines going, six to eight people from the county. And in the last two days, we've had over 1,300 voters here. Wow. And it moves smoothly. And uh, thank you to everybody to come out. Uh, they came out to vote, and please do vote. Yeah. So uh, very impressive numbers. And is it true that any resident of Cook County can vote right here? Early suburban morning? Cook County. Anybody okay. in suburban Cook County, Chicago residents cannot vote in the village of Oakland. Okay. Thank you. So, and um, I want to thank everybody for the support. Um, me going to Springfield for my annual clerk's conference. Thank you to the board and mayor, Larry. Uh, learned a lot. Um, great PR. And I was really happy. A year and a half ago, we hosted the Illinois clerks here at the Oakland Hilton for our winter seminar. And they approached me this past week and asked uh, if they could come back to Oakland again for the spring. They liked it so much. And that's a tribute to all of our community. So I'm very excited to host the um, Illinois Clerks again next April. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great yeah. report. Welcome back. We missed you. Well, thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, Village President's Report. I have Board and Commission appointments. Um, I'm going to take the uh, the people individually. Is that correct, Paul, or should I do them as a group? Um, How about re oh. reappointments as a group and appointment individually? That's Doesn't, fine. Okay, that's fine. So for Architectural Review and Design Commission, our reappointments are James Kohler in District 1, Dave Bennett in District 1, Joseph Kwiklinski in District 1, Raphael Bannock in District 2, John Benware in District 5, and Jose Pereira in District 6. May I have a motion on item 10A? <laughs> motion to approve, Mayor. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Vorder. Thank you. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion here? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strite? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And then a new appointment is Jan Getz. Jan has, uh, is a district resident. She has served on the Liquor Advisory Board and will continue to do so. Jan is a librarian, uh, or wor it works at the library for a long time, long time resident. She said she loves to help out wherever she can in the village of Oak Lawn and loves Oak Lawn. So I'd like a motion, please, for Jan Getz's appointment. Motion to approve. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. 
Thank you. Tr seconded by uh, Trustee Strait. Any discussion? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Lenichik? Yes. Thank you. Yes. For the Fair Housing Commission, we're going to start with the reappointments. We'll we'll yes. The first three, and then we'll leave. Uh, uh, okay. Mary Ellen last. Uh, Good idea. Abstained. Abstained. Thank you. Good idea. Okay, so fair housing reappointments. We have Patricia Merrick in District 2, John Dorgan in District 3, Jean Beyer in District 4. May I have a motion on those appointments, please? So moved. Thank you. That was Trustee Strait made the motion. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion here? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Lenichik? Yes. Motion passes. Also due for reappointment to the Fair Housing Commission is Mary Ellen Stalker in District 5. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Thank you. Made Second. by Trustee Carberry, seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Any discussion? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Abstain. And Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Motion passes 4-0-1. Thank you. And we have a new appointment for Fair Housing, Laurentine Grady in District 6. Uh, since 1999, she's been a teacher at Chicago Public Schools, and prior to that was a life insurance writer. She's been a proud resident for over 25 years and helps her neighbors often when it snows, when they all get stuck in the parking lot, uh, moving cars, uh, helping out the snow plows. She says Oakland is a great place, and with all the new and refurbished businesses, it's even better. And uh, there's no reason to leave Oak Lawn because it offers everything. I would love to continue to help the village and its residents. Um, may I have a motion, please, on Laurentine Grady. Motion to approve. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. Seconded by Trustee Stalker. Any discussion? And let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Ilanichik. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. And Laurentine is here. Can you say hello? hello. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, General Village Matters, I just want to offer my sincere condolences to the, the family of, of Ed McElroy, uh, who passed away. He was a, a true legend in the village of Oakland. And Jane, I know you knew him for many, many years. Uh, Yes. He, he, uh, Since I was 16, I met him at my first job and uh, yeah. worked for the attorney general's office for the summer. And Ed came in every day. He was the media relations person, just a great guy. Yeah, so we really lost a, uh, a, a, a legend in the village. And my sincerest condolences to his wife, Rita, and family. And no one will ever replace Ed. He was one of a kind. And that's my entire report. Um, we're going to move on to item 11, executive session. And I'm going to take a deep breath for this one. Executive session 2016-11 for the purpose of discussing number one, reviewing for approval of the closed meeting 2016-10 dated September 27, 2016. And two, the reviewing for the release of minutes of closed meeting minutes from June 14, 2010, number 1008. April 18th, 2011, number 1106, June 14th, 2011, number 1109, July 12th, 2011, number 1111, August 9th, 2011, number 1112, August 30th, 2011, number 1114, September 13th, 2011, number 1115, October 11th, 2011, number 1116, November 21st, 2011, number 1118, December 13th, 2011, number 1120, January 10th, 2012, number 12-01, February 14th, 2012, number 1204, February 28th, 2012, number 1205, March 13th, 2012, number 1206, April 10th, 2012, number 1207, April 24th, 2012, number 1208, May 8th, 2012, Number 1209, June 12, 2012, number 1211, April 23, 2013, number 1302, May 28, 2013, number 1303, June 11, 2013, number 1304, July 9, 2013, number 1306, October 16, 2013, number 1308, November 12, 2013, number 1309, 
May 13th, 2014, number 1404, June 10th, 2014, number 1405, September 23rd, 2014, number 1407, December 9th, 2014, number 1408, January 13th, 2015, number 1501, February 25th, 2015, number 1502, March 10th, 2015, number 1503, March 24th, 2015, number uh, 1504, July, July 14th, 2015, number 1505, August 11th, 2015, number 1506, October 13th, 2015, number 1507, November 24th, 2015, number 1508, January 12th, 2016, uh, number 2016-01, March 22nd, 2016, number 2016-02, April 12th, 2016, number 2016-03, April 26th, 2016, number 2016-04, May 24th, 2016, number 2016-05, June 14th, 2016, number 2016-06, July 12th, 2016, number 2016 07, August 9th, 2016, number 2016 08, and September 13th, 2016, number 2016 09. Nice job. May have a motion on item 11. I think you missed one, Mayor. <laughs> Repeat that, please. Too late. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Okay. Did we have a motion? Motion to approve. Oh, go in. Uh, yeah, motion to go, motion to go into executive Second. session. <laughs> okay, made by, I'm going to give it to Trustee Vorder, seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Let's take that vote, please. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Streit? Yes. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Elenichik? Yes. Thank you. So All the students need to come up, right? So the students who need signatures, what we do in executive session is clear the room, so your, your work is done. We'll sign off your papers and... Uh, Clear the room. Come on down. Come on up.